a star, the tenth brightest star in the night sky. It has a name that I'm not going to be brave enough to, to try and pronounce, but you might. Apparently it's become 50% brighter. If there's one star that has always been a puzzle for astronomers and cosmologists, it's Betelgeuse. Access to all the knowledge of the internet, it can build on whatever foundation it had in the previous moment to, to accelerate that learning. From the time of its discovery until now, this old star has been exhibiting unique and sometimes strange behaviors. These behaviors keep scientists in confusion as they keep trying to predict when this star will go supernova. Recently, Betelgeuse started behaving strangely again, leaving scientists to wonder if its time has finally come. So what exactly is Betelgeuse doing and why is it doing it now? Also. How soon will this star explode, and how will Betelgeuse supernova affect life on Earth as we know it? Join us in this video as we explore how Betelgeuse is doing something weird again, and nobody knows why. Betelgeuse is one of the most famous stars in cosmology. Located about 700 light years from Earth, this star has graced our night skies since the dawn of time. It hangs just above us, glowing with a blood-red coloration. The giant star is one of the ten brightest in the sky. It is located in the constellation Orion. Orion is a constellation on the celestial equator, which makes it visible throughout the world. It is usually most visible from November to February. It was named after the mighty hunter Orion, the son of Poseidon and Euryale in Greek mythology. He inherited the ability to walk on water from Poseidon, and using this ability, he marched to the island of Chios, where he was betrayed, blinded, and eventually banished. However, Helios, the sun god, took pity on him and restored his sight. Angry and frustrated, he decided to kill every animal on the earth, but he never got to fulfill this ambition because the goddess of the earth, Gaii, sent a scorpion to kill him. After his death, the Greek god Zeus turned Orion and the scorpion that caused his death into constellations. You can find both the scorpion and the Orion constellations in the night sky, but never at the same time. Researchers have discovered that the scorpion constellation, also called Scorpius, was placed far away from Orion on the opposite side of the sky. So whenever the scorpion constellation rises in the sky, the Orion flees, hiding below the horizon. If you've ever seen the constellation Orion, you can't miss Betelgeuse. It's located on the right shoulder of the hunter. The Orion constellation is one of the most obvious in the night sky because it has two of the ten brightest stars, Betelgeuse and Rigel. Betelgeuse is the second brightest star in Orion. While Betelgeuse is designated Alpha Orionis, Rigel is designated Beta Orionis. Rigel is a blue supergiant and the sixth brightest star in the sky. Just like Betelgeuse, this star has begun to process heavy metals in its core, and it's only a matter of time before it loses its blue glory and becomes a ticking red ball, soon to explode. One thing that makes the Orion unique is that nearly all the stars that make up this constellation are bright blue giants or supergiants. Betelgeuse is the only odd one in terms of color. You can clearly see the color difference between Betelgeuse and the other stars in its constellation. Another unique thing about the Orion constellation is the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is hard to spot with the naked eye, but you can still see it if you have eagle eyesight. This nebula, which contains dust, helium, hydrogen, and other gases, appears as the middle star in the Sword of Orion. Once again, this nebula lives up to the reputation of its siblings because NASA has confirmed that it's one of the brightest nebulas in the sky. The Orion constellation, the home of Betelgeuse, may seem like it's entirely made up of stars, but it is not. There are several exoplanets located in this constellation too. However, these planets are located some 1,100 to 1,200 light years away from Earth, making it difficult to study them. You can easily spot Betelgeuse in the night sky thanks to its amazing brightness and of course its size. There's a good reason why it's called the Red Giant. Betelgeuse is about 500 times bigger than our Sun. In fact, Betelgeuse is so large that when viewed through a telescope, it appears to be a huge disk, while other stars around it appear to be little points of light. The star also has a huge mass, about 20 times that of the Earth's Sun. Some papers, however, depict the mass of Betelgeuse to be 19 times that of the Sun. Determining the actual mass of this star is no small task because it cannot be measured from Earth. One unique property of this star that has always posed a difficulty for astronomers is its fluctuating brightness. 
It took a while for scientists to realize that these fluctuations in brightness are a result of the pulsations that Betelgeuse undergoes. You see, the red giant expands and contracts. As it expands, it gets brighter, but as it contracts, it gets dimmer. Scientists call this a pulsation cycle, and the process can span 400 days. Betelgeuse is also about 16,000 times brighter than our sun. But due to these pulsations, this value isn't constant. Also, the red light from Betelgeuse can sometimes appear brighter because of the wavelength. The universe's expansion alters light rays emitted by objects in the cosmos, so only longer light wavelengths can travel very far. The red light emitted by Betelgeuse has a longer wavelength than the blue light emitted by most stars, so this red light travels fast and easily, reaching us here on Earth. This is the star Betelgeuse, or Betelgeuse. Um, people know, of course, the Betelgeuse from the movie, but uh, Betelgeuse, quite often, it's a star in the constellation of Orion. The unique red color of Betelgeuse is an indication that it's dying. You see, Betelgeuse wasn't always a red star. About two million years ago, it was yellowish, just like our sun. As the years went by, the color started to turn orange, and then about 2,000 years ago, it became a red giant. If Betelgeuse were in its prime, it would have been a worthy rival to our sun. For instance, its brightness, which we can still notice even though it's 600 light years away, would have been phenomenal if the star were a little closer. Our sun is only 8.3 light minutes away from the Earth. If Betelgeuse were closer, at about 100 light years, it would even be visible during the daylight sky. However, in reality, Betelgeuse could never replace our sun because of its size. If you put Betelgeuse in our solar system, it would swallow up the Earth and the four planets adjacent to it. More so, Betelgeuse emits more radiation than the sun. However, oddly enough, Betelgeuse is much cooler than our sun. Its surface temperature is around 3,500 Kelvin, while our sun has a temperature of 5,000 Kelvin. One reason why Betelgeuse is so warm is because of the cold spots covering it. You see, several cold, dark magnetic spots that cover the surface of Betelgeuse contain very potent magnetic fields, and they're the main reason why Betelgeuse has a magnetic field that is a thousand times stronger than the sun's. However, the downside of these magnetic spots is that they hinder the flow of hit gas from the star's core to the surface. As a result, the star is cooler in these zones, and since Betelgeuse's surface is covered in these spots, the entire surface is cooler than it should be. Betelgeuse's unique size, brightness, and coloration fascinated even ancient astronomers like Ptolemy. At the time, the renowned astronomer described the star as orange, but contrastingly, about three years before Ptolemy had found Betelgeuse, Chinese astronomers who had observed the star remarked it as having a yellow color. In other words, Betelgeuse must have had a yellow color at the time. Since after Ptolemy brought it to light, scientists have put Betelgeuse on the radar to study it, to learn more about it, and of course, to find out if and when it will go supernova, seeing how it is an old star. You see, dying stars are usually red, just like Betelgeuse. At this point, the hydrogen in their cores transforms into helium via nuclear fusion. Eventually, the star will not be able to support its structure any longer, and so it will collapse on itself and explode. Such an explosion is called a supernova. Supernovas are powerful explosions that release heat, light, and radiation. They also create elements like nickel, iron, and gold. These metals are formed from the high-pressure and high-temperature reaction that takes place during supernovas. Supernovas almost always result in the formation of new planets and stars. Back in 2019, Betelgeuse did something scary. It suddenly dimmed. This event was known as the Great Dimming, and it lasted for the latter half of 2019 and the early part of 2020. Since that particular event, Betelgeuse's behavior has continued to be erratic. And now, Betelgeuse is doing something scary again. It is brightening suddenly. The fact that it is a dying star doesn't justify this behavior. Betelgeuse has always been an abnormal star with regard to its brightness. But even considering Betelgeuse's cycles of brightness fluctuation, this is nothing compared to that. Now Betelgeuse star has grown uncommonly bright. As of the time of this video, its brightness has increased by about 142%. Before now, the star had been fluctuating back and forth on a small scale. But behind the scenes, it was slowly peaking in brightness until it finally hit a peak that astronomers could notice. Thanks to this latest development, Betelgeuse has climbed the ranks of the brightest stars in the sky. No longer is it the 10th brightest star, 
but it is now the seventh brightest star in the sky. This new development has made many believe Betelgeuse will blow up much sooner than we predicted. Could we be on the verge of witnessing a Betelgeuse supernova? Well, sadly, that doesn't seem to be the case here. Although Betelgeuse is in its final life stage, it may not explode even in the next 1,000 years. You see, from the point of view of the cosmic timescales, Betelgeuse is an old man that can die in the next minute. But on human timescales, Betelgeuse may still last for another 100,000 years or more. You see, time measurement in the cosmos is different than ours. Most of the constellations and objects we see in space have been there for millions of years. So 100,000 years on the cosmic timescales is equivalent to a few days in our human timescales. Betelgeuse isn't the only old star out there. Some of the oldest stars in the universe include the Methuselah star, which is about 13.7 billion years old, and the Sneedon star, which is approximately 13 billion years old. But why is Betelgeuse suddenly shining brighter? Scientists believe that this current brightening behavior is most likely a side effect of the great dimming in 2019. The dimming of 2019 was so bad that it made Betelgeuse go down the ranks from being the 10th brightest star to the 20th brightest star. Scientists believe the star will return to its normal brightness and behavior within a decade. But initially, they feared that this brightening would only increase until the star collapsed. Once upon a time, a few million years ago, this star was a monstrous blue-white O-type star, and we believe it was among the largest stellar weight class. The problem with such humongous stars is that they do not last. Stars like these burn through their hydrogen stores more rapidly than lightweight stars. Betelgeuse is merely about 8 million years old, yet it's dying already. Meanwhile, our Sun, which is merely about halfway through its life cycle, is 4.6 billion years old. Meaning before our Sun would go red, it'd be around 9 or 10 billion years. Be that as it may, Betelgeuse long changed its spectral type because it has almost exhausted its hydrogen reserves. This star wasn't always red. In fact, back when it was first discovered, Betelgeuse was described as a yellow star. Then another time came when it was depicted as an orange star, and now we finally see it as a red giant. What does this mean? Well, it tells us that the star is dying faster than we predicted. With its hydrogen reserves almost gone, it's now fusing helium into carbon and oxygen. Thanks to these reactions, Betelgeuse has continued to puff up over the years, growing to about 764 times the size of the sun. Someday, Betelgeuse will run out of fuel to burn, and then it'll go boom. At that moment, its core will collapse into a neutron star. During the Great Dimming, scientists believed that Betelgeuse's brightness was reduced by up to 25%. After astronomers spent hours trying to figure out the cause, they realized it was due to a massive eruption on Betelgeuse's surface, creating a massive cloud of dust to condense on the star. The Hubble Space Telescope captured the event. It is believed that a gas bubble exploded from deep within the star. If you want to take a snapshot that's clear, you know you have to hold your camera very steadily. If you shake your camera, you get a fuzzy picture. Same thing's true with Hubble. And it was powerful enough to blast off a small section of its surface. The cloud of gas that was subsequently ejected partially obscured Betelgeuse, making it appear dim. However, remember that normally, this red giant has properties that allow for the dimming of its brightness. But although it's a relatively normal behavior for the red giant star to dim, this event was a one of a kind. Scientists agreed it doesn't usually happen like that, even for regular stars. Before this dimming event happened, Betelgeuse was known to exhibit brightness fluctuations on regular cycles. Scientists carefully observed the pattern and concluded that the longest of these cycles takes around 5.9 years. But most times, the cycle takes 400 days. But with the most recent increase in brightness, scientists have also noticed some profound changes in these fluctuations. A new paper led by Morgan McLeod, an astrophysicist at Harvard's Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, revealed that the 400-day pulsation cycle of Betelgeuse seems to have halved. As we explained earlier in this video, Betelgeuse's pulsation cycle is caused by the expansion and contraction that takes place inside the star. Based on the results of the simulations McLeod and his team conducted, it was speculated that the mass ejection that caused the great dimming event happened because a convective plume inside Betelgeuse welled up, forcing that part of the material to break away from the star. 
McLeod and his team also believe that this upwelling disrupted the phase of Betelgeuse's 400-day pulsation cycle, causing it to drop to the roughly 200-day cycle that the star is currently exhibiting. So, it seems that Betelgeuse is still suffering from the great dimming, and this current behavior of the star is not something we should worry about. Many scientists have come to accept this explanation by McLeod, thereby giving it more authenticity. One astrophysicist who has been studying Betelgeuse for years, Andrea Dupree of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, explained it this way, Just imagine if you take a hunk of the material out, then everything else is going to swish in and it's going to slosh around. I think what's happening is that the top layers are having a problem coming back to normal. Going by this theory, scientists have confirmed that this brightness will most likely continue for the next decade. However, they predict that eventually, normalcy will return for Betelgeuse, and it will begin to behave just the way it used to before. But you see, if there's one thing the cosmos has taught us so far, it's that you can never be too sure with theories or postulations. If Betelgeuse ends up doing something contrary to what experts have predicted, it certainly wouldn't be the first time. And it won't be the first time either that our scientists were wrong about something they sounded very certain about. For as long as we've known it, this star has been taking us by surprise. What if it does so one more time? What if this brightening of Betelgeuse is a sign that it'll blow up soon? You see, scientists are also actively working toward this theory. The fact that Betelgeuse went from being a yellow star to an orange star in just 300 years is a red flag that this star may collapse on itself much sooner than we thought. But one reason why most experts aren't bothered about a Betelgeuse supernova is that they believe the star won't have much impact on the Earth if it explodes. Supernova explosions are usually very destructive. Think of the effect an atomic bomb would create on Earth and multiply that level of impact by 10 times. That's how much of an impact it can have in space. Considering that Betelgeuse is a giant and heavy star, there's no doubt it will create a massive supernova. You may think Betelgeuse is far from Earth, so we won't feel it but you would be wrong. You see, supernovas release a massive burst of energy up to a thousand times more powerful than our sun's radiation. And remember, the radiation of Betelgeuse is far beyond our suns, so there's a good chance that Betelgeuse's supernova radiation will get to Earth. Scientists have also confirmed that if Betelgeuse were to go kaboom, it'll light up our sky for days or even weeks. The light would be so bright that it would be visible even during the daytime. Then again, there's the question of how much we still don't know about this star. Our judgments and predictions of Betelgeuse supernova have been based on our knowledge of what we've learned about the cosmos so far. Frankly, there is still a lot we don't know about stars and the cosmos. The shockwave from Betelgeuse may turn out worse than scientists predicted. Also, a Betelgeuse supernova could create a ripple effect in space-time that could travel across the 600 light-year distance and get to us here on Earth. All these are possibilities, but for now, we can only study this star closely with our state-of-the-art scientific instruments and hope it doesn't explode for another 100,000 years. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.